Coming up on Retiring Well with Michael Reese. The reality is this, they might charge the same 1%, but boy, do they deliver different value. And when you're retired, if you're nearing retirement, you're gonna need help in all of these areas. Make sure you pick the right advisor. As a result, even though he saved some money in the early stages of retirement, Robert would have ended up paying so much money later on, he would have been hammered. That's a big thing and a financial advisor has to be concerned about, needs to be laid out and very detailed about because obviously you may have to provide income for yourself for 20 to 30 years in retirement. Retiring Well with Michael Reese, helping you make smart decisions with your money so you can live a better life. Today is the day you can take back control of your money. Retiring Well with Michael Reese, where we believe your best is yet to come. Welcome to Retiring Well. I'm your host, Michael Reese. We've got a wonderful show lined up for you this week. We are talking about the difference between financial advisors. Now, why am I talking about that? Because I understand what financial advisors look like from your side of the table. So I understand that from your perspective, advisors, we all kind of look the same. I mean, how do you know who's really different? I mean, you've got Joe Smith over at some big brokerage house. You got Mary Jane over here at this, maybe she's an independent. And then you've got another person over there, another one over there. It seems like financial advisors are everywhere. How do you know which advisor is right for you? How do you really know? I mean, and, and are they really different or are they basically all the same? Well, the good news is that it only takes a few questions on your side of the table to really identify the difference between advisors and who's right for you. So let's go ahead and dive in. The very first type of advisor, there's really two types. The first one is what we would call the general practice advisor, kind of like your family doctor, if you will. This type of advisor is someone that essentially helps you with investment management. That's about it. They don't really do anything else. Their job is to help you put together your portfolio and create some kind of asset allocation and just set up your portfolio uh, to make money for you. Typically, these are growth and accumulation types of advisors. That's typically what they focus on. Uh, balanced portfolios and asset allocation. These, this is what they talk about. And this is what you're going to find in pretty much every big brokerage house out there. You know, the big names of Merrill Lynch's and Ray, you know, Raymond James, all those big places, that's essentially what they do. Edward Jones is another one. Now, the second type of advisor is what you would call a specialist. Now, there are a number of specialists, but if you're watching the show, typically you're gonna be most interested in what's called a retirement specialist. Now, if you visit with a retirement specialist, sure, they're gonna help you with your investing, but they're gonna help you in a lot of other areas. In fact, in our firm where we specialize in retirement planning, there are five areas that you have to address. You know, of course you need your investment planning, but what about your retirement income plan? How are you structured to pull income from your portfolio so that it's stable and so it's going to last? What about your tax planning? I'm gonna give you a terrific example uh, a little bit later in the show about how tax planning or ignoring tax planning uh, costs somebody a lot of money. Uh, you wanna make sure you're on top of that. Healthcare planning. So we've got investment, income, tax, healthcare planning is number four. You know, that might be as you get, once you're 65, you've got Medicare that you're picking up. How do you make the most out of that? What about things like um, long-term care that might come up from time to time? That's healthcare planning. And then of course, the fifth area is estate planning. How do you, do you have wills? Do you have trust, powers of attorney? Do you have the right tools for the right jobs there? In other words, a retirement specialist is gonna help you in a lot more areas than just how's your investments going, right? So the easy question you simply ask is when you visit with a financial advisor, hey, tell me what you do. Tell me what you do. If all they do is talk about what they do with investments, you got yourself a general advisor, just you know your, your family doctor. On the other hand, if they sit back and they say, well, 
You know, we help you generate a retirement income plan. We, we help you optimize your Social Security benefits with your income. We help you with tax planning. We help you with estate planning. We help you with health care planning. If they're hitting on all those other topics, well, then you got yourself a retirement specialist. As you enter into retirement, you know, if you're within five years of retirement and as you enter into retirement, both, you're going to want to make sure you're working with a specialist. You want to make sure that you're working with a team who can help you in the multiple areas of planning that you need when it comes to your retirement. So I don't want you going anywhere because coming up later on the show, as I said, I'm going to give you a great tax story. We're going to have a great chalk talk. You're really going to enjoy this. So sit right back. We'll see you in a minute. Hi, I'm sitting here with Larry Flynn. Thanks for being here, Larry. Thank you, Mike. He's one of the advisors at Centennial Wealth Advisory. And, and folks, uh, as you may know by now, we certainly invite you to come visit with us. It's absolutely free to get a second opinion on your retirement planning. And I think it's important to get a second opinion from someone who's a specialist when it comes to retirement planning. And Larry, I'm sure they're wondering, you know, if they pick up the phone and they call and come visit with you, what kind of a, what can they expect? What's that experience like? Well, Mike, they can expect not to get hard sold. Okay, we're going to greet them warmly. Um, we're going to sit down and talk to them a little bit about their maybe their story. You know, where they're from, where they grew up, how they met their spouse. You know, what they're dreaming of doing once they get soon to be retired or retired. Kind of what are their goals, right? Yeah, what are your goals? Um, we're going to talk to them a little bit about who we are what we do, show them how we do things, especially dealing in the market realities we find ourselves in today. Got it. So essentially, they're coming in, you're learning a little bit about what's important to them, what their goals are, what they're trying to accomplish. I'm sure you're taking a look at what they're doing so far. You maybe share a little bit about you, and it's, it's just in a very relaxed atmosphere. That's right. Uh, and, and there's no cost to do this. Is that correct? No cost. No cost. All right. So, folks, there you go. I mean, it sounds very simple, very easy, very laid back. Uh, there's no reason for you not to just pick up the phone, call the number on the screen, come visit us, get that second opinion. You'd be glad that you did. Welcome to this week's Chalk Talk. Uh, we are talking this week about the difference between, say, a general advisor, a general advice uh, a financial advisor, and someone who is a retirement specialist. And what we're going to talk about now is how these folks are compensated. So let's imagine it's pretty common that your financial advisor, general practice financial advisor, they're going to charge you probably about 1% per year of your portfolio for their investment advice. That's pretty standard, pretty typical. Now you might find one, they might charge a little more, another might charge a little less, but that's pretty standard in the industry. Well, what about a retirement advisor, someone who specializes in retirement? What are they gonna charge you for investment advice? Probably somewhere around the same 1%. So what the heck's the difference here? They're charging the same number, and they're delivering the same value. What's going on? Well, what's going on here is that one of these guys or gals ends up delivering a lot more value than just investment advice. That's the difference. So here's what I mean. When you talk to your typical advisor, general practitioner, they're charging out 1% a year for their investment advice. They're done. That's it. Nothing more. That's all you get. But if you talk to a retirement specialist, you get a lot more. I'm gonna start making a list. For example, a retirement advisor is gonna help you with your income planning. And when I say income planning, that's gonna include things like social security optimization. It's going to include how do you structure your portfolio to get stable and predictable income. Where's the best place to take income? This guy over here, he's typically saying, oh, I'll kind of pull it from, make my, my choices, you know, kind of when each year we'll make an, ide an identification of where to pull the money. No, we got a plan here. It's a written retirement income plan. And during your retirement, that's gonna be important. What else? Here is a big one. Tax planning. A retirement specialist is gonna help you with your tax planning. Part of that has to do with income. 
hey, which account? Do you want to pull income from your IRA or should we pull it from your after-tax account? We're going to talk more about that in a little bit. But it's not just that. What about Roth conversions? Are you doing Roth conversions every year? Should you be? Should you at least be looking at doing Roth conversions every year? What about your ongoing tax liability? Is that being looked at? Are, is your portfolio being managed in such a way to keep your taxes to a minimum? These are all related to tax planning. What about the big HC? What does that stand for? Healthcare, healthcare planning. When you hit 65, you're gonna be on Medicare. What's the best way to manage your health insurance when you're on Medicare? Is this guy going to help you? No. What about this one? Yeah, they're going to help you. It's important. What about long-term care protection? You know, that could be a big deal. Long-term care could be a big deal. How much help are you getting over here? None. What's going on over here? They're going to help you identify how much protection do you desire? How do you pay for it? You know, what's the best way to pay for it? What's the best type of program to have? They're going to help you look at it. They're going to help you evaluate it. And then the last part, EST, estate planning. Ah, that is probably room. Let's get that on here. Yeah, estate planning. Estate planning, your wills, trusts, beneficiary arrangements. How much help are you going to get from this person versus how much help do you get over here? The reality is this. They might charge the same 1%, but boy, do they deliver different value. And when you're retired, if you're nearing retirement, you're going to need help in all of these areas. Make sure you pick the right advisor. Here at Centennial Wealth, when we talk about your best is yet to come, what we're really referring to is that retirement is different today. Retirement represents a fundamental change, yet most people don't match that with the fundamental change in their investments. Too often we see couples and individuals sticking with the same strategy that got them to retirement and not adjusting to a plan that will get them through retirement. People who retire today are living 20, 30 years. And when you have that kind of time frame, you have the time to pursue the things that are meaningful to you, that are fulfilling to you. In looking at your retirement income, you're no longer drawing a paycheck from the company you work for. Instead, you have to be the provider of that income. You don't want to leave this to chance, so we help clients evaluate all of their options to help provide the best solution based on their needs. Most people in their working years put money into IRAs and 401ks because they wanted to push the tax off to their retirement years when they expected they would be in a lower tax bracket. Far too often though, they find themselves in the same lifestyle, in the same bracket, and all they did is kick the can down the road. Well, I'm happy to share with you, we have helped guide hundreds of families past that point into a future that is absolutely bright. Although it's not fun to discuss, it's vital that we evaluate your life insurance and long-term care planning. The insurance world changes regularly, and you need to know that we're keeping you abreast of today's ever-changing environment. The three biggest threats to our retirement savings is what we call the hit list. There's health care, inflation, and taxes. People can't afford to run out of money, so they have to plan for these things. If you make smart choices about your money, then you have nothing to worry about. No retirement plan is complete or properly constructed unless you have an estate plan in place. We will regularly bring in an estate planning attorney to speak with our clients to ensure that their estate planning is structured properly. Today we see people with Social Security, no pension, and everything else in their retirement savings. The challenge is to turn that savings into retirement income that can last their lifetime, not subject to market fluctuations. We want you to be confident. We know you can be confident. We've done it before. We can do it for you.
Welcome back. So I promised you earlier in the show I'd give you a great story about how tax planning, or said another way, a lack of tax planning, you know, ended up costing someone a lot of money. On the plus side of the story, the good news is we caught it, thankfully, before it was too late. But still, you know, what was lost was lost. All right, here's what happened. We'll call him Robert, right? Robert came to us uh, for a second opinion, his planning. Now, Robert had done a terrific job saving for his retirement. This guy had literally $2 million. He had a million of it in an IRA and the other million he had in after tax. I think what happened was he saved uh, the million in his IRA over his many years working. I think the other million, as I recall, he might have inherited. Doesn't matter. Either way, he's sitting pretty with a couple million dollars. Now, by the way, before I go any further in the story, you don't need $2 million for the same benefits that we're about to talk about. You know, this just happened to be his situation. You might have 200,000. These same rules may apply to you. So everybody's different when it comes to tax planning. And I mean, everybody's different. But this is just a great example of how a general practitioner you know, can, can and versus a retirement specialist, how there's a huge chasm of difference between them. All right, so let's go back to uh, Robert with his $2 million. So here's the deal. He retired at age 60 because he's over 59 and a half. And so his thought was he, that gave him access to all of his money. Um, and then he decided because he had enough money, he was going to uh, take his social security. He's going to wait until he was age 70 because he figured, hey, he didn't really, he could use his other resources. He didn't have to get social security early. He could just let that social security benefit grow until it maxed out at age 70. And so far, so good. I love everything he's doing. This is fantastic, right? So far, so good. But then here's what happens. His general practitioner advisor tells him, Robert, why would you take money out of your IRA? That's taxable. Wait until you're 70 and a half and then pull it out when you're forced to. And when you're forced to pull it out, just pull out the minimum. By doing that and just taking income, all of your income from your after-tax money, if you do that, that money's already been taxed. So as you take income out of the after-tax money, it's gonna be tax-free. For the next 10 years, Robert, you're gonna be at a 0% tax bracket if you do that. You will owe no tax on your income for the next 10 years. And that's what he recommended. Now, now, first, was that general advisor correct? Would that income be essentially tax-free uh, for the next 10 years? The answer is yes, it would be the way it was structured. The way it was structured, the income he needed, indeed, it did work out that it would be tax-free for the next 10 years. And in fact, when Robert came to our office, he was 64 years old, so he was four years in his retirement. And he was literally, had no he paid no income tax for the first four years of his retirement because of the structure that they had set up. That's fantastic. Of course, here's the problem. The problem is, we said, okay, Robert, that's great. You're not paying taxes for this 10 years. What are you doing about your tax planning then starting at age 70? Because think about what was happening for him the minute he turns age 70. His IRA of a million dollars had 10 years to grow or would have had 10 years to grow. It'd probably be $2 million. That means his required minimum distribution would be about $80,000 and getting bigger every year. Plus on top of that, his social security, which he's been delaying between him and his spouse, would end up being about $50,000. Well, that's another, that's about, so he goes from no income tax to 130,000 of income, which would be taxed, getting bigger every year because his required distribution gets bigger every year. I said, what are you doing about that? And, oh, by the way, if you die, you're leaving your spouse a $2 million plus IRA. She's now a single taxpayer. What do you think the taxes are gonna be on that? And, oh, by the way, You've been paying no tax the last four years. You've been in a 0% tax bracket. I'm sure your advisor has told you, you need to do some rough conversions, get money from a taxable to tax-free at a real low tax rate. You're in a 0% tax bracket? Let's take advantage of that. Did his general advisor 
Investment advisor guy, did he recommend any Roth conversions while they're in a 0% tax bracket? No. So those were gone. In other words, this general advisor was saying, let's focus on the here and now and let's ignore the future. Big mistake. As a result, even though he saved some money in the early stages of retirement, Robert would have ended up paying so much money later on, he would have been hammered. Now, proper tax planning would have said, hey, Robert, how about this? What if we just pay a little bit more today? Not much, but some. Let's do some Roth conversions, for example. So your required minimum distributions when you're 70 are lower. And that way we can manage taxes today and tomorrow so that overall you end up in a lot better position. Since Robert came to us, he had the option because we helped him. He was able to save tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of tax over his lifetime by balancing that tax planning versus trying to get all the benefit just today. Huge difference between advisors. That's why you want to talk to a retirement specialist. What can Retirement Analyzer do for you? Retirement Analyzer is a software tool that can help you prepare today for your financial future. You've worked hard to save for your retirement, but as you near your retirement, you may have concerns. Have I positioned my retirement savings wisely? Have I saved enough for retirement, and will my savings last throughout my lifetime? What impact could inflation have on my future expenses? What if I suffer a long-term illness? Will I have enough money to cover my medical care expenses and still be able to meet my other financial obligations? Could changes in the income tax rates disrupt my retirement strategy? There's no need to be in the dark as you prepare for your retirement. Retirement Analyzer can help you find answers to all these questions and more. The first step is providing us with information on your financial assets, the type and current value of those assets, as well as your sources of income. Then, we work with you to identify your expected expenses in retirement. This will include a discussion of the lifestyle you envision in retirement, travel, a summer residence, whatever you dream your retirement will be. We'll input the information you provide us into the Retirement Analyzer, and in a very short time, we'll have reports that show us the percentage of assets currently in high-risk vehicles, as well as the percent in lower-risk products. Retirement Analyzer enables us to project your income from year to year in your retirement and see how long your retirement savings may last. As we change the conditions of the report, delaying your retirement date, including costs for long-term care, adjusting the expected tax rate, or adjusting your retirement strategies, we can see how changes in these variables may impact your income in retirement and the longevity of your retirement savings. Let the Retirement Analyzer help you test drive your retirement strategy today, because the time to discover the bumps in the road is not once your trip through retirement has begun. Contact our office today to schedule an appointment for your Retirement Analyzer review. Hi, you're here with John Torbett and Art Canfield here of Centennial Wealth Advisory serving all of Northern Michigan. And we're talking about different types of advisors and what sort of roles they play when it comes to uh, your financial planning. And so, Art, I'm going to turn it over to you to get us started on that. Yeah, this is a really interesting topic because, you know, our specialty is mainly with folks leading up to retirement or getting near retirement and in retirement. And then there's this a group of advisors that serves the, the not in retirement phase. Sure. And the, the services that one should expect and one is needed is vastly different. Right. You know, when you're... 30s, let's say you're you're in a 401k or you're trying to save it, and you you know you don't need as much outside planning. You know you're more investment sort of picks and those decisions. But when you get to near retirement, in retirement, there's kind of this big shift that has to. It's a it's a fundamental shift in your life. So therefore, really, it's a fundamental shift in your whole planning. And uh, you know, and, and you can talk about, you've been here a long time, with how really important it's now it becomes then just looking at investments, right? Exactly, yeah, and, it, and it's maybe the old mentality of, okay, I'm just gonna buy this and hold it forever more. Um, you don't necessarily have the time involved where you can take on as much risk. So you think of, um, 
back like 08, 2008, when markets dropped significantly, if you were just to sort of hold that, that mentality and that investment, okay, it maybe took you five years to get that back. And so in, in retirement, and especially when it gets to the stage where you're saying, okay, I might want to draw some income from this, I mean, that can devastate a, a plan. And so you need to avoid those, those major risks and make sure to more so gear towards consistency, I think is, is the, uh, the ideal way to go. Right, and you said the word income. You know, one of the big things that a financial advisor that is not helping you in retirement, they don't have to worry about an income plan. Sure. You know, that's something that's relatively non-existent. Your income plan is your paycheck, I mean, yep. for all practical purposes. But in retirement, that's a big thing and a financial advisor has to be concerned about, needs to be laid out and very detailed about because obviously you may have to provide income for yourself for 20 to 30 years in retirement. And the thing on top of that then that you think of is, okay, if you're going to be generating income from this, typically a majority of assets are in 401ks or IRAs that haven't been taxed yet. So it's a matter of understanding, okay, what are the tax implications of, of that income that I want to draw from the portfolio? And what's, what does that look now with Social Security, or if you're fortunate enough to have a pension, you know, how that all plays together. Right. And if you don't have a financial advisor that's not looking at all that, you know, the cost to you isn't just what you're paying the financial advisor, but if they're not helping you through all those things and there's a hiccup along the way, right. the cost can be out. He's huge. Yeah. So you really have to be evaluating what that financial advisor is providing for you and, and all those steps. You know, it can we can go on and on and on when you get into health care planning and long-term care planning estate planning, legacy planning, you know, the list goes on and on when a true retirement advisor swoops in and helps with all those things. Right. I mean, we've used the example before, but you think of sort of that second opinion and you go to, you know, a doctor and your general physician is, is meant to do that. But if you're needing brain surgery, you're not going to use your general physician for that. Or if you're um, going to an, uh, an attorney and you want an estate plan, you want to find one that's focused on estate planning, not one where maybe they did that, you know, 20 years ago, they, they were forced to create a plan, but um, you want to make sure that that's their, their area of expertise, ultimately. Right, right. And then, too, you know, going back to kind of that, that surgeon sort of mentality, and when you very specialized, you know, there's things that, that, that retirement financial advisor is going to have to get in and tweak and do little pieces. You know, something that, that comes up, you know, if you have after-tax accounts like tax harvesting, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes that, that, you know, there was a study done, I guess, a little while ago that they, they said, what was the biggest cost of retiree has? Well, it was taxes, right? right. I mean, that, that if somebody, if a good financial planner, fi tax planner, all that, can save you just a percent or two in taxes, that's huge over sure. the course of your life. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and that's where, I mean, ultimately where you're maybe paying taxes, tax harvesting, you're paying tax on money that you shouldn't necessarily be paying taxes. It's not, not income that you need at this point in time. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's a, you know, very interesting topic. And, you know, we could go on and on about this. But, you know, really the question is for you. What are you paying your financial advisor and what services are you getting in return for that? And do you feel like they're bettering your situation? Are you better now than you were before you started that? Um, if you would like a second opinion, we'd love to sit down and be able to talk to you about this, explain all the services that we provide and how we may be able to help you have a very successful retirement. Thanks for joining us. 